Good afternoon. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris A. Hutt. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the CNC router and an upgrade that I had performed on it, oh, probably about a year ago, maybe a little longer. To be honest, I lost track of when I did it. But what it entails is replacing the original stepper drive system that I had on here. Stepper drives are wonderful devices, and if you stay within their functional parameters, uh, they can be incredibly reliable and incredibly accurate. However, if you wander outside of their performance envelope, all of a sudden you start losing steps. And then positioning goes away, and now you've got a reliability issue. If you're familiar with 3D printing at all, a lot of those layer shift problems are lost steps. Something is blocking the uh, drive mechanism from uh, achieving its position, so it just skips steps. And then from that point on, everything is shifted by those lost steps. In the industrial CNC world, we rarely ever see stepper motors used uh, for motion control. It's almost always uh, servo-driven systems uh, that are either pseudo uh, closed loop or truly fully closed loop where they couple them also with a linear scale attached directly to the slide. Those are very expensive systems and you can get them for hobbyist equipment but be prepared to lay out a substantial amount of cash for that performance gain. A number of years back, uh, stepper drives or stepper motors and stepper drive manufacturers started pushing the envelope with what they could do uh, to increase reliability, accuracy, and repeatability. So what they did was they attached a rotary encoder, an incremental rotary encoder, to the end of a stepper motor. They take the feedback from this encoder route it through the stepper drive so that it can constantly check to make sure that it is in position. If it's out of position from where it should be, the device will usually set an alarm, a flag or signal, send it back to the CNC control, thus stopping the system so no further harm or damage can be done. Now in the CNC hobbyist world, uh, usually these closed loop stepper systems are a relatively expensive upgrade. Um, once I find the information, I'll post how much this one costs for my system here. Uh, I bought it from Automation Technologies. I think they're over in Carroll Stream, uh, Illinois. They're a local vendor. I've been using them for many, many years. Uh, ball screws on here, a number of other components are actually purchased from them years ago when I was building this system. Uh, but nonetheless, the important thing to remember is there's two important aspects to a closed loop stepper system. The encoder that feeds back to a matching stepper drive that is also uh, suitable for closed loop operation. Now over here, I have another stepper motor, and you may have seen this one featured in some of my videos about the automatic tool change system. Now on this stepper motor, I added an encoder to it. That's still running truly fully open loop. That encoder feedback I'm looking at from another microcontroller just to uh, count position or to determine positional data. It has nothing to do with feedback to that stepper drive, thus closing the loop. Now, what is the purpose of that? As mentioned, uh, stepper drives start losing uh, reliability as you push the envelope of performance. Now, for me, performance wasn't a real critical issue here on this CNC. Uh, it's a hobbyist machine. I wanted reliability over everything. Uh, but I started getting into doing CNC carving. And I'll be having a number of videos uh, up on the website here real soon covering this. But the problem with CNC carving, if your performance isn't high enough, meaning that your RPMs of your router 
And most importantly, the velocity that you can achieve with feed rates, if you can't get fast enough feed rates, your tool rubs too much, and on certain woods like cherry, you will get a lot of burning. And that's definitely not what you want to see with a relief carving like that. And I'll bring this up, and hopefully you can see right up in this area here the burning that I'm talking about. Uh, it also helped me with the other function that I use the CNC router a lot for, and that is isolation milling when I'm making circuit boards. Uh, there I really didn't have too much of a problem uh, like burning or anything, but I wanted a little better performance. After I added the uh, automatic tool change system, I started getting a little greedy on how fast I wanted things to get done. Uh, so I had a, a massive benefit and improvement in performance for that application as well. There's a lot of little tiny moves there, and it's very easy for a marginal system to lose steps, lose accuracy, resulting in a scrap component. Now, I'll take a look at uh, the carving that I just did here to film for this sequence, and you'll see on those motions, this is a very slow process in this particular case. The deviations or the movements along z-axis, as we're moving back and forth on x, are relatively uh, mild and uh, short moves. If there's more contouring involved, such as that cherry uh, cityscape that I was showing earlier, with this much movement on it, the cutter, thus also the axes, are accelerating and decelerating very rapidly. That's where you'll usually see a step or drive start losing steps. Since implementing this system, I've been able to achieve 30% higher feed rates overall, much faster accelerations and decelerations, and have not sacrificed any reliability issues. So it was a great big gain for how I'm using this particular router. Now we'll take a look inside the control cabinet so that you can also see uh, the stepper drives and how that's integrated with the stepper motor and the encoder. Here are the three closed loop stepper drives, X, Y, and Z. Uh, the way this basically works, you've got your output wires sending, going to the motor, telling it to move, sending it pulses. As it's moving, the uh, stepper motor's rotating, feedback information is coming back from the encoder. It looks at that, looks at the difference between where it should be and where it is, and if that leg or that uh, out of position increases to a preset amount, it will send an alarm over to the CNC, thus shutting it down. Uh, but for uh, implementation or changeover, I have very similar drives in the same exact location that were for the uh, open loop system. So for me, it was actually quite simple to incorporate into the space that I had. Over uh, on the other side where all the cables come in, it uh, took a little bit of work there on my I.O. panel or my pass-through panel, but nonetheless, it really wasn't that difficult. Now, the question should be asked, was it worth the cost? And again, I'll be posting that up here in one of the backdrops somewhere. I'll put up the, the amount that it cost me to implement this system. Uh, let's say it's uh, for simple explanation right now. Let's say it cost me $500. Um, in the performance gains alone, I would say yes. I don't make money, well, I do kind of make money with the YouTube videos, but uh, I don't make money or earn a living off of this CNC router. It is a tool that I use like any other tool uh, out here in the garage or down in the electronics lab. It's a tool. Uh, the more efficient I can become with that tool, and the more efficient it can perform functions for me, the more benefit I see in that. Uh, it opened up new possibilities for what I can do with this tool. It allowed me to get into CNC carving and avoid some of the pitfalls with the slower performing machine. Uh, for my uh, isolation milling with PCBs, I've got a greater level of confidence I'm going to have a higher precision uh, 
a device or circuit board when it's done. Keep in mind, with some of that PCB milling, I'm working with drill bits that are 20 thousandths of an inch and smaller and end mills that are only about 8 thousandths of an inch or V cutters that come down to a very, very fine point. So every bit of precision that I can put into the process, the better probability I'll have a good product coming out on the back end of that. So overall, it is a decision that I'm very happy to have made. I'm happy with the system that I bought from Automation Technologies. It's been in use, I'm going to guess it's on and off for about a year now. Uh, so it hasn't been any problems uh, since then, so I'm real happy with that. Uh, so all around, it's a decision I really wish I would have made when I originally built the machine. Uh, it would have saved me the cost of buying the original three-steppers and the original three-stepper drives, only to replace them here in this last year. So, yeah, I'm pretty darn happy with the decision to do it. And if you're considering a good performance upgrade, I would suggest uh, that you give it a thought. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, too, my system here is all ball screw driven. So the ball screws themselves actually establish another level of performance impedance uh, within my overall system. For me, though, I'm actually exchanging that velocity performance gain by going to another drive system for precision. For me, I need more precision than I do speed. So I'm still nowhere near uh, the capability of what the system could do if I changed the ball screws out for a rack drive or a type of belt drive system. Maybe it's something I'll look at in the future, but right now I'm really happy with the precision and with the performance. So if you're looking at it, give it a thought. Maybe give it a good consideration and give it a try. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.